Well, good evening. Matt back out here on the line. Just got off work. Drove down to check the old hay set that I have right back there. You can just faintly make out the drag line from before. But look, no log up there. I know where it's at. It's actually directly behind the camera. So you know what that means. Right back there. Let me move over. Maybe you can see just beside that tree, right down through there. Stepping in a mud puddle. Mr. Red Fox back there waiting in the... This, there's normally no water there, but we got a lot of runoff here from some rain, so... He's back in the, the muck there, so let me go get him and uh, I'll try to get him out of there without drowning myself. This would be a good time to have a 22. Just saying. It'd be a lot better to uh, take care of this fox with a pistol and then pull it out of there, but you can get it set up and uh, I'll get him out of here anyway. <laughs> so I just use a stick to guard myself for a minute while I get him out of there, but he's really tangled up. Let's see what I come up with here. I got a real good catch on him. Not worry about that, but of course he does not want to come out of there. Just tap him on the butt, see if he doesn't jump out. Come on, jump out of there, buddy. Come on, get out of there. Well, maybe he's stuck in there. He's swimming like a muskrat in there. There we go. I'm gonna get him out of there now. Okay, so I used the water to dispatch the fox, so um, instead of compressing its chest, expelling the air, I used the water to drown it, much like a drowning line would do for a muskrat or a, you know, a beaver or even a raccoon. Um, so I knocked him out, and then I used the water to uh, drown him while he was unconscious. But anyways, that's it for this fox. That's another catch for the hay set. I... Uh, I think that's going to wrap it up, guys. Um, we've got just about four or five more days left in the season, and I'm not going to remake this. I'm going to be pulling my sets today. I'm going to call it a season right there with that. Why club? There's a couple reasons. Number one, my father showed me. Number two, if you look right back there behind me, there's a house right there. Right over here, there's about a dozen houses. There's a highway that runs right down there with about 20 houses. The point is, there's a lot of people around. If I start setting off firearms, somebody might get to asking questions and gaining curiosity, and it might be some attention that you don't want to necessarily have while you're out on the trap line. So if you trap out in the boonies, shoot away. But here around the suburbia, I have to be mindful of that. So I just got in the habit of using a club. I'm not opposed to using a rifle. I do dispatch them that way from time to time, but it is not my go-to method. Number two, if you're doing it at a set, it does keep the set cleaner. You do not have to clean up blood is what I'm saying. Club, and then you stand on them, and then you remove them. I find that it's a much cleaner remake. 
if you don't have blood on it. Uh, it's, maybe it's uh, just a personal, personal preference with that one. Number three is all the way back at the fur shed. When I'm skinning this guy out, I don't have the blood to deal with. You'll notice if you watch the shed, remember I do my live skinning, you know, my skinning shed videos, if you ever watch those, I don't have much blood to deal with. So that's a reason, again, that I don't uh, use a rifle when I don't have to. I don't. So that's why the club. I've been asked a few times about that, and I figured I'd just drop it in here at the end of the hay set. And, uh, well, that's that. Just a nice, nice size male. A little red. That'll be the last one for the season. And I'm going to get him out of here. Now, this log, you can see it's held up really good. Um, my fence staples are fine. This is last through. Those have been the same fence staples. I put them in when I set it the first time, and I never drove them again. So they hold up. Fence staples are fine. When they're on a drag, the drag will move before they pull. But it's almost a shame to have to get rid of that log. We have such a long history together. <laughs> okay, I'm being silly. But that's it, fellas. The hay set works. Make it part of your trap line. Look at this big old log drag. That has served us well this year, hasn't it? Now, I'm not a real sentimental guy, but I almost hate to throw that into the woods. I think that's going to find a, a home in my fur shed. <laughs> At least till I get tired of it. Good log. We'll take that home with us too. I know, I'm a sentimental old fella. Duke one and three quarter. Got a pair of them. They served me really well for that hay set. And they'll serve me well again for many more. That's the red. Looking wet and pathetic. <laughs> All right, let's head on back to the rig. Never fails. If you make a great fox set, you're going to catch a raccoon. <laughs> Just a little female raccoon. On right up the tree. Uh, she looks no worse for wear. All right, so just parked the four-wheeler here. Uh, the farmer lets me use it. So um, hopefully you learned a thing uh, with the hay set. Uh, once again, I want to give credit to my good buddy Timberline North. You can check out his channel. Channel Just punch into the search there, Timberline North. He does a lot of live chats, and uh, he got me straight on the hay set here last year. And so this year is really the first chance I had to uh, 
really push a little bit with it and you see the results so hopefully you could take that and do something with it and uh, you know put a little bit more fur into your shed too um, that's it for me I'm pulling all my canine traps out so I'm done for the year with that and uh, the only thing that's ahead of me now is beaver so we're gonna go up and I'm gonna try and trap a few beaver with the kiddos and uh, after that we're not just gonna cut the channel down in seasons past during the summer we just shut it down we're gonna do some bush crafting this year so we're gonna go out and uh, do a lot of fishing a lot of bush crafting a lot of boating so we're gonna do a lot of that stuff that keeps content on the channel and hopefully keeps y'all coming back and checking out the kiddos and myself doing what we do and hopefully if you're not watching me you're out doing it yourself because that's the most important thing right if you watch these channels or any of the, uh, the guys that I follow if you tell us that you were inspired to go out and do it on your own well that's a good reason to get off of the YouTube there and you know it's much better to be in the field yourself than watching others enjoy the field but hey since you're here at the channel, thank you. We do appreciate it. All of us do. The whole trapping community. We thank you for it. So um, next year, I am going to do the flat set videos that I had talked about. And, uh, you know, of course, more content about, uh, you know, sets. You know, trying to teach a little bit. Tutorial type stuff. But not much for tutorials, though. Uh, so it'll be kind of like the hay set video. So if you like that, I'll try to do more of that. Um, Anyways, I'm, I'm rambling here, so I'm just going to get uh, get back in the truck, get home, get some supper. I just want to say thanks for coming along with me on the trap line, and uh, it's been an awesome haul this year. Really looking forward to uh, what's ahead. Um, got some beaver coming for you, so don't uh, forget to check back. But other than that, I hope you guys are putting your fur up and uh, you know getting it shipped out. Hopefully we get some uh, as close to top dollar as we can. Oh, I wanted to say this. Um, the reason I'm stopping for the season is really simple. Uh, the red fox that I have on there, I'm happy to catch it. And it's gonna be my final catch in the hay set for the reason that I saw its fur. And the fur is starting to go. Uh, it's just starting to, uh, your guard hairs and stuff. It's just getting rough. The, they've been running through briars all winter now. So their fur is getting kind of uh, worn out. So I'm not gonna trap anymore. There's two things. You want to be a good steward to the sport and you want to be a good steward to the market. And that goes hand in hand. A good steward to the sport is if you're a trapper and you're out there bad talking trappers, well, you're an anti. Knock it off. Be a good steward to the, sp to the sport. Any of that critique that you think you got should be hidden behind support. Take that to heart, guys. We need that. We don't need your, your criticism. Post the pictures, post the videos that you feel like doing, and don't listen to the naysayers. Just be honest and ethical about it. And number two is, an, is uh, being a good steward to the market. Fur prices right now don't really, uh, um, well, it just doesn't call for us to put up big, big numbers, you know, whatever that is for you. If you wanna chase it hard just for a personal reason, that's cool. If you're doing your own garments and all that stuff, whatever whatever reason you have, but uh, be a good steward to both the sport and to the market. Try to be conscious of both. I just released a raccoon back there because you know there's just no reason to be harvesting those little the females like that. So, but that's it. Uh, again, go check out my buddy Timberline North's channel and stop back often and check in here. And uh, again, thanks a lot. I really appreciate all the support. We're going to be pushing towards a thousand subscribers, which I thought Pencil Tucky Trapper would never see. So I'm so excited to see that number creeping uh, closer and closer. All right, stay uh, stay tuned for the shed. I'm going to be uh, doing some uh, you know work back in the shed with putting these fox furs up, and of course beaver trapping ahead. But uh, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for coming along. I'll see you the next time on the trap line.